That's why I don't think most people lose because they fail. I think they lose because they quit. If you treat success like a sprint, you're most likely gonna fail because it's a marathon. But it really is that. Until you don't think you can stay in the game anymore. That's when you pivot. Just because you gained weight one week does not mean your system's wrong. And just because you lost weight one week does not mean your system's right. And it's very, very important to zoom out and get some data. You need some data. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode, number 1,125, How Certainty Driven Are You? Today, for episode number 1,126, knowing when it's time to change course. If you are a new listener to Next Level University. You might not know this, but I don't remember when it was. It was August or no, the from September to August, Alan and I said that we were going to lose 10 pounds in 10 weeks. So obviously it wasn't September to August. Whatever August 1st was the end date, I believe. Worst idea ever. Worst idea ever. Brutal. Brutal idea. Many other things crashed and burned. We were spending way more time doing fitness than probably other things. It was not <laughs> it was not sustainable. But I was talking to Alan about this the other day, and we were talking about how a lot of people start things and they don't get results right away. And that's something that we obviously talk about a lot. That's a fundamental. But when are you supposed to change course? And how often have you changed course before something was actually on the verge of working? And I told Alan, I said, it's very interesting because when we started doing the 10 pound and 10 week challenge, and I started like really tracking my calories and really, really exercising and really weighing myself, I gained a pound in the first week. So over the first seven days, I actually gained a pound. And a lot of people would say, ah, nope, either my calories aren't right, there's something wrong, my scale's broken, I'm not working out correctly. I, because I've done this so many times, I have an understanding of that doesn't really matter. Honestly, you know what was probably happening? I was probably drinking more water. That's honestly probably what was happening because I was eating less and I was probably making up and water has weight to it. But what did I do? I continued with the system that I thought would bring me the results and I got to 10 pounds in 10 weeks. I actually got there early. All things considered, it wasn't too challenging in terms of the weight. Everything else was challenging, eating less and all that. But the the goal for this episode is to at least raise your awareness to that point. I know we do that often, but Alan has a good story about that. And I'd like to talk also, Alan, about how can somebody figure out, how do you know if you've exhausted all of your options when it's when it comes to you doing something? Like, how do you actually know, oh, you know what? It's really time for me to change course. This isn't going to work the way I, I thought it would. Before I ask that question, or in, before I answer that question, wow, we're in trouble, aren't we? Good one. Yeah, we're, we're in, in trouble. trouble. 7.34 so, on a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I have a story that I think is going to illuminate a lot for our listeners. And this is a story that is very representative. This was a light bulb for me where it was like, oh, that's why. Okay, so so I'll keep this anonymous, of course. Always do, um, even though this particular client would not mind me sharing this. Uh, so she has been uh, essentially trying to lose weight for off and on, off and on for about two years. And uh, she was in a reverse diet prior to COVID. And she gained a lot of weight, gained a lot of strength. That was on purpose. It wasn't a negative thing. It was a really good thing. And she stuck with it, stuck with it, stuck with it. She was the strongest she's ever been. COVID happens. She can't go to the gym. Mm. Now, uh, ever since then, she's kind of been trying to get back to that old version, that, that leaner version, but with more muscle mass. So she's hired different coaches. She tried different programs, this, that, and the other thing. Okay. And we talk a lot about uh, cycles on this podcast. So like patterns. Patterns is another word for cycle. And so she's running this pattern of, okay, I'm going to try this new coach or this new diet and I'm going to see if it works. So I essentially got on the phone with her and I said, listen, uh, this fitness thing, my main focal point in coaching, I'm trying to figure out what's the core of what's holding someone back. And usually self-esteem is is one of the big ones. Uh, this person's self-esteem is not as high as it could be, particularly because she's not succeeding at her goals in fitness, okay? 
at least not to her own standards. So I'm like, okay, if we solve that, that self-esteem will turn into self-worth and that self-worth will ripple into the rest of your life. And that's for another episode. Let's just prove to yourself. We need to help prove to yourself that you can do this thing. So I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you a mathematical bet, probability. I promise you that if you do these three things, you will lose at least six pounds in the next 90 days. If you promise me you do these three things. And she said, okay, what's the three things? Number one, track your weight each day, first thing in the morning. Number two, exercise. Now, this is hard. This is really difficult. But she's a very, very avid fitness goer. So this is totally doable for someone like her who's been lifting for probably eight years at this stage. 60 minutes of exercise per day. That can be cardio, walking, can be hit training, it can be weight training, whatever you want, but it has to be consistent movement. Okay, weight training is optimal, but just 60 minutes of consistent movement once per day. Now, yes, that's a lofty goal, but it's just 90 days. You can do it. Okay. Third thing is eat less than 1400 calories. I said, if you do those three things, I promise you, you will lose at least six pounds in the next 90 days, probably more mathematically I've calculated that because there's approximately 3,500 calories per pound, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And she's like, uh, okay. Um, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't think this is going to work. I said, okay, over the last two years, you've told me you've struggled to get this goal. How many days, if you're really honest with yourself right now, have you done those three things simultaneously in a row without screwing them up? without messing them up. And she said, honestly, maybe a week. And I said, that is why. Mm -hmm. That is 100% the reason why you have not gotten the result. It's an objective truth. Take it or leave it. So now we're into this thing, right? Long story. Sorry, Kev, I'll let you talk a no, little bit. No, you're good. Uh, so the first week goes by and she's like, holy crap. I can like feel my abs again. It's working. I'm 1.8 pounds down. Holy crap, right? Awesome. It's great, great, great. Of course. It makes perfect sense. Second week, jump on the phone. Oh, you actually gained 0.7 pounds. And she came to me and she's like, I want to pivot. I don't want to do this. I think we should try a reverse diet. And I said, I think we're about to break the pattern. What if every single time you tried something over the last several years, every time it didn't go the way you thought it should go, quote unquote, you pivoted? I said, I promise you. This is still the right play. And I showed her the graph and I showed her the trend line and I showed her she's actually going to hit her goal. Stay the course. Stay the course. And I said, please give me at least one more week of this system. And if you're not at least at this weight by next week, then I'll wonder what else is going on because this is an anomaly. The point that I want to make here and, and, and I think that this episode is really about is if you're too focused on the day-to-day -day fluctuations, you can't zoom out to understand the trend. And just because you gained weight one week does not mean your system's wrong. And just because you lost weight one week does not mean your system's right. Mm. And it's very, very important to zoom out and get some data. You need some data. We had one big month at NLU, 47,000 or 42,000, whatever it was in February. We cannot suddenly assume that's going to happen forever. Right. Yeah. And, and just like when we have one bad month with 12 K or 15 K or whatever it is, we can't presuppose that's going to stay forever either yeah. because everything in life is cyclical. It's highs, lows, ebbs and flows. And so the trend line, the through line, the, the slope of the trend line is, is it headed up or is it headed down and at what rate? And if you can't zoom out long enough to see a pattern, you got to be very careful about changing course too quickly. Now, the opposite is also true if you zoom out for three months, realize you're not losing weight, now it's time to pivot. Yeah. And hopefully that answers your original question of when do you pivot? Honestly, you can't pivot too quickly or, or take too long to pivot. Yeah. Just because our podcast has only 200 episodes, uh, 200 listens per day for a couple weeks does not mean we're doing something wrong because we had the week before 3,650 listens in a single day. Stay the course. Stay the course long enough to notice a pattern that's actually useful and use your intuition the best you can and just fail forward and learn along the way. And honestly, if you feel incapable or, or 
incompetent when it comes to trend lines and graphs and awareness and stuff, you can reach out because I'm happy to help. It's my favorite thing in the entire world, genuinely. I'm so excited for her so that I can prove to myself that this will work. Mm. You know, and I told her that. Like, I'm up at night, like, thinking about your goals. Seriously. You know, not up at night, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Brushing your teeth. Hmm. Yeah. How can I help you get better? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. I, you, you taught me this. I did this with a client recently. I said, how well do you know your audience? And this person was like, yeah, pretty well. And I said, all right, cool. Give me 50 things that they struggle with. And I was like, 40 is not enough. 60 is too many. Give me 50. And the person was like, I don't know if I can come up with 50. And I was like, well, that's the point. Like, I want you to stretch. And that's what I got from you. When we used to make lists, I'd be like, what do you think, 10? And he'd be like, nah, let's stretch it. 25. 25. 25. And I think the point with that is, if you said... If I went to, if I came up to you and I said, all right, give me 10 ways you can make money and then go try all 10 of those ways, you can come back and say, ah, none of them worked. All right, cool. Give me 10 more. Give me 10 more ways you think you might be able to make money. And you could go try and make money with those 10 ways. Ah, none of them worked. All right, cool. Give me another 10. Let's just, you know, just for, for, for poops and giggles, give me 10 more ways. Who knows? So you just tried 30 ways, 20 of which you never would have tried. What if it's number 29? that you make money on that. I think that's the, I guess that's my value for this episode is when you exhaust all options, all aligned, relevant, I won't even say logical options because some of the, some of the options aren't going to be logical. That's why I don't think most people lose because they fail. I think they lose because they quit. And we, we talked about that in, I don't remember what episode it was about if you treat, success like a sprint you're most likely going to fail because it's a marathon but it really is that until you don't think you can stay in the game anymore that's when you pivot because so many or you don't want to stay or you don't want to yeah yeah because it's it's not it's no longer aligned or bringing you the value or or yeah value that you wanted that, that, and again, that's a slippery slope too, right? There's a lot of places you could go with that. But it's just interesting because I had a client say this to me the other day, and it's, it's similar to this. She said, it's so interesting how so much is happening for me now, and even a year ago, I wasn't sure what was working and what wasn't working. And I said, yeah, there, it's because you need, you have an idea, then you test the idea, then you get the results from that test and then you can figure out whether or not to double down on it. But that cycle takes time. Mm-hmm. It's not, I did a podcast episode and I see how many listens we get. I mean, yes, for us, because we do an episode every day. But if you're doing one episode a week, it's different. If you're just starting your fitness journey, it's different. If you're just starting your business, it's different. That lag time, make sure you complete the cycle a couple times and then you start to look for trends to Alan's point. Again, Easier said than done. I don't know that we're going to give you a definitive answer on this one. This might be one of those episodes where it's it's more philosophical. But odds are you're quitting way too early. Oh, yeah, most likely. Right? Most likely, statistically, sure. you're probably... This is the great, the, the best stat in the world for this. And I will get an actual a- accurate representation of this as a podcast coach and consultant. But last time I checked, they said roughly an estimated 75% of podcasts that have started are no longer in production. So imagine that. Imagine you're in a room with 100 people and within, and every week you meet up. Every week you meet up to talk about your latest episode. Within the first three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, 75 of those people stop showing up. And there's just 25 of you. And if you, if you push that out over the course of a year, I mean, it probably ends up being like 12 people or something. So not really even. think about that. Yeah, probably not even. Yeah, yeah. That, that stat is a good and representation. five years, how many people? <sighs> One, two. Yeah, if that. Right? Yeah, I haven't met many people, I mean, even going on a lot of podcasts. There have been some that have started when we have, but most people are, a lot of people started in the pandemic. I'm Derek Smith, and I just wanted to talk to you real quick about group coaching. I found it to be very beneficial. The biggest thing that I got from it was definitely the tap out and keeping track of the daily habits. It's much easier to get these priorities done when it's scheduled. That way you know that you're doing them first compared to trying to fit them in later. So 
scheduling it and getting that done first and then having something accountable every single day to do those was definitely beneficial. So if you're thinking about giving group coaching a chance, you should definitely do it. I got to share this, Kev. I, I felt pulled to this. Emilia and I were on a walk with Tucker last night and we were talking about that, you know, that principle we learned about a while ago. And two things I want to say. Uh, one is the 12 week year. There's a book called the 12 week year. Everyone should look it up. It's because to Kevin's point, most people are quitting too early. At least give it 90 days. Mm. You got to at least give something 90 days before you keep pivoting. And 90 days, that's why group coaching is 90 days. <laughs> Shameless plug. But the reason why is because that's what you really need to actually have a transformation. No one's going to transform in a week. No. You know what I mean? That's not real. I mean, we just talked about an NLU team member who's been with us for two years. And we talked about how much he's transformed in two years. We, we overestimate what's possible in a week and underestimate what's possible in a year. It, it really needs to be a long game. Human beings are here for a long time for a reason. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, second piece. I'm on a walk with Emilia last night with Tucker. And we're talking about this principle. She wants me to teach her all these mathematical concepts. And there's this one principle that's really powerful, which is 80% of the results come at the last 20% of the journey. So if Kevin and I are doing a, uh, a coaching session, I'm coaching Kevin, 80% of the breakthroughs are going to come, let's say it's an hour long session, 80% of the breakthroughs are going to come in the last 20 minutes or the last 15 minutes in this case, because that's 20%. Podcasting, we've had more listens in the last year than the previous four years combined. Mm. And I don't think people understand this. So we did the math. We went to the whiteboard and we did the math out. Uh, So essentially, if you take the first, let's say you do something for 90 days and you take the first quarter of that, which is 15 days, what's 90 divided by four? 90 divided by four would be 22.5. Okay, so the first 22.5 days of that journey, assuming you're running the same system, by the way, that's what we're presupposing, you're only going to have a very small percentage of the total result. You're going to get um, think of it like a growth curve. So you're going to get, obviously it depends on the circumstance, but you're going to get, we, we did the math. If, if you compare the first 22.5 days to the total 90 days, it's 478 times more. The, the full 90 days is 478 times more results than if you just did it for the, the 22.5 days. And now again, that's with a, a mathematical formula of 1.5. You know how the dominoes? So yep. for those of you who don't know, a domino can knock over another domino 1.5 times its own size, which is essentially 1.5 to the 20th power. I'm not going to get into the math Mm -hmm. of it, but that's how we calculated it. The first five dominoes, if you knock down 20 of them, the first five dominoes, the, those add up to one 478th of, if you do all 20 dominoes. Mm. And that concept is so drastically misunderstood. And I told Kevin this one time, I said, Kev, I do not have more self-discipline than you. I have more mathematical certainty that it'll be worth it than you. So it appears like I have more self-discipline when in reality, I'm just more certain that it'll be worth it. And so hopefully that can land for everybody as well. And that's the, that's the important thing too, is you have to believe it's worth it. If you don't believe it's worth it, you're going to continue changing course because it's going to say, well, I'm wasting my time. This diet isn't working. This business isn't working. How did you know it was worth it? I didn't. Son, I did. No. (laughs) I don't know. I I didn't know how, I didn't know if and how successful we would be, but I knew I'd be more successful with you. That's it. No, 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 not that. I meant the diet, 10 pounds in 10 weeks. Oh, because I've done it before. Okay, how did you know, how did you know? Before you did trial before. and error with very little pressure. Essentially, you did it with your coach before, right? So you trusted your coach. I did it long before that. I did it long before that. I remember. I remember we were back in my heyday. We were going to a concert, Jason Aldean concert. Why did I go to a country concert? Don't even ask. Because the the liquor was flowing like the salmon of the Capistrano and. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I was getting drunk. And I remember I Cowboy literally... Cowboy hat, shirt off. Yeah. Jacked. Yeah. Kid was jacked. Yeah. I remember I, I did like a cut. I said, okay, I want to be jacked. 
I'm going to lose however many pounds before this concert. And <laughs> Welcome to Kevin's brain. Okay. That was my brain. I want to be jacked. Yeah. How many pounds do I have to lose Honestly, before this date? What I what I lacked in height, I could always make make up for in the way I looked in terms of like being lean. I was really good at that. Oh, yeah. Was Super my motivation lean. positive? No, not as positive as it could have been. But I remember I did that. I reverse engineered to the the highest of my ability, okay, this is what I want to look like. Then I was a personal trainer. I also understood, well, I've done this with other people. I mean, I can do this with myself. So yeah, it was, but you, this is the thing. Back when I was doing that, the, the perceived pain of failure was very low. If I don't weigh in at whatever weight, it's not that big of a deal because I'm going to a concert to get drunk. It's not like I'm sh I'm showing up on stage. So I had a lot of test runs where it didn't matter that much. That That's bit, pretty much it. The other thing too is um, I think you were typically in better shape than other people. So it's like the pressure is not really there. Yeah, it didn't really matter as much. But I also think it's important to, yeah, find the right amount of pressure for you. And, yeah. and this, this person that I'm referring to, like I said, she's been bodybuilding for eight years. So it's not like this is the first time. Like the, the, 60 minutes a day, I would not recommend that yeah. to someone new. And I want to make that disclaimer very clear, like genuinely. Yeah. that That's not a good... I, I only do a half hour a day. So, And I've been training for essentially eight years now. So just find find what system you want to run. Don't change the system until you're sure the recipe isn't working, Right. The chocolate cake might come out great. You just need to give it a little more time. And try, yeah, keep trying to improve the process. Mm -hmm. You might have the right tools. Maybe they're, you might have the right ingredients. Maybe it's the wrong order in the wrong quantity at the wrong temperature. Okay, let's try that in a different way. All right, cool. Well, what can I do to make sure the flour I get is the highest quality possible? I got to get different flour. The chocolate chips I'm using are garbage. I need better chocolate chips in this analogy. Any, Strong work. Any baking analogy, like anything with food, chocolate, cookies, I'm brownies. I'm so hungry. You're so hungry? Yeah, man. I, I had a little. Today. Oh yeah, I had a lunch with Taryn today. I had, I had a little break in between my calls. We had uh, chicken tacos. They were wonderful. Oh, I bet. So don't uh, hashtag never quit. Never quit. Mm -hmm. And again, if you get to the point where you know, th there are points where you'll end up pivoting. That's all I'll say. But make sure you hang in there for as long as humanly possible. As long as humanly possible. Many people, most people, quit too soon. Be consistent. Uh, be persistent, make it sustainable, and then focus on trying to improve. And yeah, it's a feedback loop. You know, you try and then you see how it's working. I would say 90 day goals. I think that's powerful. I really I do. do. Too. 90 day goals seem to be working really well for my clients. I've started doing that a lot more rather than what do you want to achieve with your life? Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you could like, do anything. If you, if you had a, if you had a magic genie, if you had a lamp and a magic genie popped out, so you can accomplish anything, what would it be? It's like, um, I think margaritas on the beach, billionaire would be good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sounds good. How do Let's we do, do that? 90-day yeah. goals work really well for me, too, to the point where I had them up on a, my whiteboard, and I think I'm going to start doing it again because that's you when should. I had the most success in all facets of the business. So, What's your NLPS goal, son? I don't know. That's good. Good. That's really Honestly, good. Honestly, for me, it's, <laughs> it's been, there's been a lot of just trying to keep up and survive. I know, bro. Sorry to call you a lot. No, no, you're good. It's all gravy. Next, Level Nation. If you are focused on growth, which we have been talking about for this entire episode, and that's really all we talk about, we have a virtual <laughs> meetup that is on November 3rd. This is what I want to say about the meetup, and I don't know if I usually don't talk about it. Alan usually does. We did a meetup last, it was last month, but it was, I don't know, a week ago at this point, and it was one of the best things I have ever been a part of. Not just because we put it on, but it was an opportunity for people to be very vulnerable in the chat and talk about what's real and not have to put up any sort of shield or any sort of, of ego or fake persona of what they're dealing with. We could just talk about what was real. And we had some great questions and great engagement in the chat. So this month's, or actually it's next month's, November 3rd, how to find your unique genius zone. Maybe the reason that it's not working for you right now is because you're not doing what you actually should be doing. So we're going to talk about the genius zone and how to find it, what it means for you, all those happy things. You can keep your microphone off. Yes. Uh, you can keep your camera off. The chat was on fire. We had, I think, 80 plus messages in the chat during that hour. So uh, a lot of engagement came through. You can engage uh, audio, video, or neither, and you can engage in the chat. Also, 
Uh, we have book club, as you've heard about many, 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 many times. Hopefully you are out there and you're reading. I, I obviously encourage reading. It's changed my life. I've seen it change so many people's lives. I now have a certain curriculum that I'm using for each client. Um, I'm always asking my clients. I was on the phone with a client earlier. I was like, what books are you reading? I'm just recommending books that I think are going to help people. The books that I think are going to help people, we do a poll in Next Level Nation. And uh, the last book that came up is called Switch by Dan and Chip Heath. It's essentially a book about how to change your behavior. And we meet every Saturday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want incentive to read more and to read more often, this is the way. Uh, we discuss these concepts. And again, you don't have to participate if you don't want to. We've got a private WhatsApp group. It's a really powerful community, 50 plus people. Um, but every week, it's probably averaging around 12 people in Zoom. Um, so it's not too overwhelming. I hope that you decide to join us. It's been growing pretty, pretty well. Hashtag NLU book club next level nation tomorrow for episode number 1,127. This is going to be a, a good one. It could be a little controversial, but it's going to be a good one. How, and this is in quotations, it just wasn't meant to be is hurting you. We have done these episodes in the past where we have kind of dispelled myths that are memes or they're positive quotes. And I think oftentimes the quotes that are meant to empower you are actually quite disempowering. So we are going to talk about that. As always, we love you, appreciate you, grateful for each and every one of you. At NLU, we do not have fans, we have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Please reach out.